let's do a cosine graph now. Y equals negative one third cosine x plus pi over two. So we've decided that we're going to use this formula again. Some some books use this. Some books use other ones. Some books put the b outside like this. Some books don't. This is the easier way to do it because you can see right away. This is your horizontal shift. This is your vertical shift. This is the per period is 2 pi over that and this is your amplitude. Remember with the cosine graph we're gonna start at the top so if these are my five main points right here one two three four five and these are my horizontals right here. A cosine graph if it's positive it starts at the top ends at the top because it's a full period which means it bottoms out in the middle and it's at the middle line in between. Mm -hmm. That number's two and four. That's a cosine graph. If it's a, that's a positive, that's if A is positive. If A is negative, it starts at the bottom, ends at the bottom, bottoms out, in the, or tops out, peaks out at the middle, and it's still at these two points. So this graph, if A is less than zero, if the amplitude is negative, it starts at the bottom. And if the amplitude is positive, it started at the top. Okay? So that's my cosine graph, as opposed to the sine graph, which, if you had a sine graph, it would have started, remember, in the middle, right here, and gone up, down, and finished in the middle again. Really, this, they're the same graph, really, but it's a matter of where you're starting your, your period. So let's do that with this problem. So first I'm going to take the, uh, remember I like to deal with the uh, vertical stuff first. So there's no vertical shift. That makes it easy. And the amplitude is negative one-third, which means I'm going to go up, let's call this line one-third, positive one-third, and let's call this line negative one third. It's going to go, that's the positive and negative, but it's going to start on the bottom here, right? Because it was a negative amplitude, it starts on the bottom and goes up like that. Okay? So that's that. The period is even easier because the, because the B is one here, right? So the period equals just two pi, which makes it super easy. So I'm going to be at zero, this is the trickiest part right here, zero is my starting point, two pi is my ending point, oops I put too many things in there, two pi is my ending point, which means between them is going to be one pi, half of two pi is one pi, half of pi is pi over two, and this would be three pi over two, you just count by this. 1 pi over 2, 2 pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 4 pi over 2. That's the way I do it. All right. That was one of the hardest parts. Now, the next hard part, I'll do this in gold, is I'm shifting everything. My horizontal shift equals negative pi over 2. I'm shifting everything over left pi over 2. So I have to subtract this. Instead of being 0, it's going to be negative pi over 2. Basically, what I'm doing is I'm starting here. I'm starting at negative pi over 2, right there. And then I'm going 0, positive pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2. So there's my full cycle. I'll erase this so I don't confuse, confuse it. Notice that my period is still a full 2 pi, but I'm starting instead at negative pi over 2. All right, now, since it started at the bottom, notice I'm going to erase this. Now I know where my center line is, so I'm going to go ahead and draw it in. There's my y-axis right there. That's why I wait to draw the y-axis in. There's my x-axis, my y-axis. I start at the bottom, so there's one point. I end at the bottom, so there's another point. I, I peak out in the middle right here at pi over 2, and those two points are there as well. So here's my graph. And then, obviously, it would keep going like that, too, by the way. But that's the main. They're going to ask you for one full period. So there's, there's one full period right there. 
and that's my graph.